Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Retro Game to the Comp video, it's been fair to say that AMD have been in the news an awful lot recently with their Ryzen CPUs, but Intel are very confident still. So in this video, we're going to be tackling two pieces of news from the respective companies. Intel remaining confident, despite the fact that Ryzen is kind of, well, getting ever closer over the next month or so, we're going to start seeing uh, reviews most likely popping up, and also information that Ryzen will see a 6-core processor, and moreover, <coughs> some updates concerning clock speeds. We're going to start out with AMD first, because it's the quicker of the two pieces of news, quite frankly. So, when it comes to Ryzen, there has been a lot of conflicting rumours. The no 6-core rumours originally started that um, we instead would have an 8-core 16-thread uh, model, an 8-core eight 8-thread eight model, and finally a 4-core 8-thread uh, model. However, more information popped up from Canard PC, who of course were the folks who managed to get an early engineering sample and did some reviews and said, no, this isn't necessarily the case. Their sources had told them that there was going to be 5 SKUs available um, with the top-end 8-core 16-thread and a slightly lower version of the 8-core 16-thread as well. And all of the other ones we've discussed, however, there would definitely be a 6-core. Now, Canard PC has also restated that. However, another website by the name of IOTech have confirmed through their sources that it is possible to split processors for the Ryzen cores into a 4, 6, and 8 configuration. I'm going to read this out exactly. We have confirmed from our sources that AMD's upcoming Ryzen processor can technically be configured as a 6-core model. It is possible to disable each CPU core separately together with the dedicated level 2 cache from the CCX without affecting the shared level 3 cache. Possible level 3 cache configurations are 1 slash 1, 8 megabytes, half, which is 4 megabytes or completely disabled. Basic rule is that both CCXs should have similar core, uh, CPU core and level 3 configurations. For example, both could have 3 cores and full 8 megabyte level 3 cache, which would in this case mean that you would have 6 cores, 16 megabytes of level 3 cache. So what does that mean? Well, that actually tells us the complete bloody opposite of what we were saying the other day. The other day, um, a famous overclocker had mentioned that his sources had told him that cores needed to be balanced. So in short, you could have a six core processor. The problem was that you would need to disable two CPU cores on a CCX, whereas now that doesn't seem to be the case. In fact, you can disable just a single CPU core on a CCX, but they need to be split evenly. So in short, you then need exactly the same situation with the second CCX. So in other words, you would need to disable one CPU core on both CCXs because just for those who don't know, there's four cores per CCX. Okay, I can understand possibly how there's some wires being crossed here because if you're quickly texting one another or dealing with this in the email or reading this on, you know, Skype or you're talking to someone real quicker to meet, it's possible that, I mean, it's requiring me to actually explain that kind of in depth <clears throat> and reading out a quote and then explain it. Imagine if you just mentioned that word of mouth and said something along the lines of, um, you know, processes need to be balanced uh, between the CCXs. That could possibly explain a conflict of how that this information is becoming a bit twisted. I'm not saying this is the case at the end of the day. It is just rumours. As you're probably aware, the Cable Lake processors have launched officially. We've got the 7700K, 7600K, and all of the other different derivatives. But there is a recent um, quote from Intel's CEO, and he believes that Ryzen will be tackled with Cable Lake, and moreover, we're going to see Canon Lake shipping in Q4 2017 for certain. So... I'm probably going to butcher this name because I looked at it. I was like, well, yeah, this is going to be a name I struggle with. Brian M. Kranich, hopefully I've pronounced that correctly, said in response to um, an analyst's question, 
I would tell you that we're always looking at this environment and say there's going to be competitive risks in the environment. We're always focused on really our own product roadmap and we're sure we have the highest performance product. So when we look at 2017, we still believe our product roadmap is the best it's ever been. And as we look at Cable Lake and it really ramps up through 2017 or it just comes out just at the end of 2016, now we'll ramp up with more SKUs and more, a higher performance product as we go into 2017. Then we showed at CES our first working 10 nanometer Cannon Lake product, which we're still planning to ship by the end of the year and really ramp up into 2018. We believe that our roadmap and our leadership will continue to give us the performance the customers want and desire. So that doesn't necessarily factor in with more cautious forecasts. That forecast was more a function of where we think the PC market really is overall, end quote. This is kind of weird because it really comes down to clock speeds, IPC, number of processors per, you know, or rather a number of CPUs per die and a whole bunch of other stuff. From what I've been told, it looks like Coffee Lake and Cannon Lake essentially are the same architecture. And basically, if we're talking about Cannon Lake, which is the artist formerly known as Skymont, that's S-K-Y-M-O-N-T. It is a die shrink of KB Lake. Now, as a die shrink, it's basically the brainchild of process architecture and optimization. So what in theory we're gonna see, of course, is reduction in power consumption, possibly higher clock speed, and maybe, just maybe, a few IPC changes here or there, although obviously we just don't know. Tiger Lake, on the other hand, which is supposedly going to be, I'm sorry, I think I just said Tiger Lake, I mean Coffee Lake, is going to be hitting the first six core mainstream SKU. Now, unfortunately, there's not exactly a release date for this thing. It looks like it's going to be 2018, which means that at least for the mainstream side of things, the only real counter that Intel have are very highly clocked four core slash eight thread CPUs. But it all comes down to pricing, IPC, and clock speed. And now I keep saying that, but it's like if you bought an i3 uh, 7350, if you look at the benchmarks of those processors, it's really hard to argue that they're very impressive considering at the end of the day, they're just dual core processors with four threads total. But if you look at the pricing, and I say that without actually having the pricing available, let me just uh, do a Google. I'm being very professional today. I have, you know, very, 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 very professional. Okay, so uh, I'm using UK prices here because bugger, you know, looking at all the different regions. But you're looking at about 240 bucks for a 7600K, which is obviously four cores with no hyper-threading. Whereas on the other hand, the i3-7350 is running at around 170 Great British Pounds. Now, I'm not saying that that makes this particular CPU awful in terms of pricing, but, and obviously I'm being slightly rough here, but it's around 60, 70, US, uh, 70 pounds difference. And I would personally argue that for that extra money, I would rather cough up and buy a 7600K, just personally. Because ultimately, I... A uh, virtual thread is not going to be as, as good in terms of performance, Just let's just be honest here, as a real core. And the same thing, of course, could be said for the 7700K. So I'm not saying Intel can't compete. I'm just saying that it's going to be really interesting in the market. And I have a feeling that there are going to be some very, very heated debates online. Uh, I'll give you an example of some arguments that used to pop up. This is back in like the mid you know, noughts, so like 2000 and like, I can't remember, but let's just say like when the dual and the quad cores were starting to come in like that type of period, when single cores were starting to phase out and then you had the dual cores as like the standard. And I myself used to be members of forums, I won't mention various ones, but I used to be a member of the forums and, you know, you used to have people all the time suggesting to buy a dual core processor because it could clock higher than a quad back then. And I used to be part of the camp that said, no, just, like, buy the quad. And, you know, yeah, you might get a couple hundred megahertz out extra out of the dual port, uh, core, which is great for games that only relied on a couple of threads. The problem is I would much rather have that extra those extra cores, generally speaking, 
because if you ever decided to do anything else with your PC other than a game or b developers, because that's of course the time the 360 and other titles were starting, uh, other consoles were coming out, those developers wanted to push multi-core, then it would be a problem. And what happened? We got Grand Theft Auto 4. Now, Grand Theft Auto 4 did technically run on a dual-core processor. It just wasn't the best on a dual-core processor. And even if you had, like, a Q6600, you would kind of need to clock it at a decent rate. It, it was quite CPU-intensive. Now, I'm not saying that's going to be the situation when it comes to KB Lake and, you know, it just doesn't have the threads or anything like that. I'm just saying that we are, over the next year or two, going to definitely start to see games, engines, really start pushing DirectX 12 and Vulkan. Now, whether that actually means anything in reality or whether Cable Lake has such high clock speeds and its successors have such high clock speeds that, you know, it's fine, we just don't know. So it's going to be a very, very interesting couple of years. So I guess we can only wait. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll uh, see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.